The internet is full of health tips and secrets, but are they healthy or even safe? A recent beauty hack claims that using minoxidil can help you grow thicker eyebrows. So minoxidil, as many of you may know or may not know, it's a medication used to treat male pattern hair loss, commonly found in products such as Rogaine. But can this regrowth medication really work on your eyebrows? We are about to find out in today's What's the real deal? So is there any truth behind this? So interestingly, there is. This is actually a safe and effective hair growth method you can use, typically used on the scalp, but I tell my patients 2% will help regrow the brows. You just have to be a little cautious with it. Use a Q-tip, make sure you're applying it really precisely. Try not to drip it into your eyes. If you do, you're gonna have to rinse it out because it's quite irritating. Certainly can cause some irritation on the scalp, so be cautious because the skin here is also quite thin. I thought you were gonna thin. say if you got some in your eyes, you start growing hair out your eyeball. Well, you can. <laughs> so if you drip it, I have had patients where they're a little bit sloppy with this and they get little tufts of hair on their cheeks and wherever it splashes around. You're so, so that's why I always say the 2% because that's a little bit less potent, the 5%, which is extra strength. Maybe you don't want to necessarily start with that on your brows unless unless you really have sparse brows like I did after over tweezing in the 90s. Is the over plucking the number one cause of thinning eyebrows? I think that's the number one cause. I mean, how many of us in the 90s didn't want those pencil thin brows? At least I did. And then they never came back. It was the most frustrating thing. Is it one thing. of those things where you get later in life, you're like, why what did I, I do that? Thinking? What was I thinking? So not over yeah. pluck. But the, <laughs> <laughs> but the other things are nutritional deficiencies, certainly thyroid disease. That can be a cause of thinning laterally, especially. And then there are autoimmune conditions like alopecia areata, where you actually lose chunks of your brows and your eyelashes if it Just affects like your there. hair. Absolutely. So I always tell people, if you're worried that you're losing brows or losing eyelashes, please don't just assume that it's okay. If it's something that's persistent or progressive and getting worse, then you should see a dermatologist. Make and sure. this is a little different than Latisse, which is specific. <laughs> for eye lashes, correct? So interestingly, Latiste or Bimatoprost is also effective, but the problem is it's much, much more expensive. So this stuff, over the counter, no prescription, you can buy it generically, you can buy it at your bulk retail stores, but Bimatoprost, if you buy it, is about $175 wow. for a very small bottle. And while you only need like a drop of it and it will work, I think this is a much better value because you're just using a drop with the Q-tip. All right, what are, what are some other options or thoughts you have? So I think that the Bimatopro certainly has science behind it, but it's expensive. I think there's some really interesting data on kind of a gentle balance of what's called mechanotherapy, where you actually massage areas where you have thinning hair and thereby increase blood flow, and that may help. I think first and foremost, like you said, don't over-tweeze if you're trying Maybe any of PRP? these things. Well, platelet-rich plasma, certainly. Low-level light therapy, if you're going to go into someone's office and have a procedure, that, that will help. And then in the worst case scenario, even hair transplant is now being and done on the And we talked about that on the show. Yeah. And people who are facile with the uh, makeup yes. wand. I mean, we've seen just some wonderful transformations even on this show. You're, they look great, by the way. Oh, thanks, I, I don't know thanks. what you've done. I may have worked the on 90s, it just but, a little bit. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Thankfully, job I have that because fuller brows are in. They are, yeah. I mean, that is, that is the rage. It also highlights something, though, Drew, which is sometimes trends come and go, but if you try to engage in a, let's say, trim your eyebrow trend, they're never coming back. So you have to be careful when a trend comes into play, right? Really thin eyebrows. If that's a trend... You let your friends engage in that trend for five years, and then when thick brows are back, you can laugh at them. Uh, Dr. Bottery, we have you. What about microneedling becoming so much more popular mm -hmm. to enhance your brows? And as the dermatologist, are you... Do you like this trend? Do you feel it's safe? And so microneedling with PRP, I think certainly will enhance the hair growth. Or microblading. But microblading, is, I knew, yeah, I was going to say. I meant is, microblading. Is a, yeah, so microblading, I think if you are going to a skilled practitioner, is fine. That's where you basically almost etch tattoo-like pigment in to camouflage thinning brows. And, and actually, in a skilled hand, I think that's really excellent. But I actually had a colleague who was another dermatologist come about a year ago to my practice because she needed laser removal because she had gone for microblading and it had gone awry and she looked a little bit drag queeny and it was not her favorite look. And because so, it went overboard cause, cause with you, the you dye? Because you just have to be so careful with who's... It's just like any cosmetic tattoo, right? If they have a very heavy hand, you may not love how that frames your face. You would want a referral for that, for sure.